All right, uh, I don't know if the third time's a charm, but it is interesting. North Korea's leader meeting with China's leader, uh, third time in as many months. Of course, the last powwow got the president a little concerned because he was wondering what the heck's going on. But uh, Kim Jong-un is going to be a busy global traveler here, a man who once never really left his country, uh, save under duress or orders or whatever you want to you know, call it, is going to be meeting with Vladimir Putin in the fall, a host of other dignitaries who've invited him. He's suddenly the man about town, and very often probably not in the hermit kingdom. Rebecca Heinrichs on what we are to make of this. What do you think? Well, it looks like Kim Jong-un wants to have a different kind of reputation. And so he's, he's sort of making the rounds. Now, this meeting with uh, Xi in China is interesting because it shows that the Nor North Korea understands just how critical that alliance is. Uh, China is referred to often as North Korea's big brother. China mm. has taken credit for what it perceives as success from the summit between the United States and North Korea. And so, uh, you know, it looks like North Korea is sort of debriefing the, the Chinese and telling them what they think. And the Chinese are certainly probably, you know, giving the North Koreans some advice about what to do next vis-a-vis -vis the United States, because this next step is that they're supposed to be making moves to denuclearize. So. You know, China is going to be giving them advice about uh, how to go about who, how to go about that, and what to get out of the Americans in return. Well, good luck with that, because the North Koreans <laughs> might just offer them advice on trade, because they're going nowhere <laughs> fast for the time being. How do you link the two? We've gotten much, much tougher with the Chinese, despite this great personal relationship. The president talks up, but even post the meeting, we've dug in our heels and uh, even threatened that if they even want to respond to these next wave of tariffs. We're going to come down on them like, you know what? You know, it's interesting. It, it, it seems as though President Trump is really, he's still going hard on the tariffs, even though we still need the Chinese to cooperate on the North Korea issue. Um, and so, and China is the only country in which President Trump has said that there might be any sort of benefit and relaxation um, of the tariffs, that sort of thing, if they do help in these other areas. He hasn't done that with any other country. Uh, and so that remains to be seen. But it is interesting how hard he is being and, and relentless. Um, you you got to wonder, you know, something's got to give. I, I would like to see the Chinese continue to put pressure on North Korea. That's not what they've done. In fact, the Chinese have begun to relax uh, some of their trade restrictions that they had on North Korea leading up to the summit. And since then, President Trump even acknowledged that and said that's OK um, as long as they're continuing to help the North Korea issue. So uh, there's a lot going on there. And clearly, President Trump is still negotiating. We're sort of seeing the mix of this and all of it is wrapped up together. I wonder if he reads in the press their terse, snippy comments, much like remember uh, Justin Trudeau in Canada when he felt that he was saying, that is, the president felt that he was saying something differently than what he had said at the G7 summit. And the Chinese have been very dismissive of the president, um, saying this is reckless, it's unwise. And I'm wondering if any of that just sticks in his crown. He says, oh, yeah, you know. It might. And I, I actually, the more I started thinking about the Trudeau flap that happened right before the summit, to me that seemed a lot like messaging to the North Koreans. Really? Which was that don't... Absolutely. I started kind of because the, the message coming out of administration officials was that don't don't try to, to pull this. Don't try to pull one over on President Trump. You have these private conversations. You make these promises. President Trump is not is still he's not going to stick to his end of the deal publicly if you're not going to stick to your end of the deal publicly. So to me, that seemed a lot like messaging um, with North Korea. You know, what if I it's think just that, impulsive. What if it's just, you know, sometimes we look for a method to what appears to be madness. And it you know, could be. sometimes it can be mad. It, it could be. You know, one of the things I've learned as an analyst and, and with the Trump administration is not to be overly confident in my own analysis because yeah. President Trump is different. Um, right. but, it, but, but I do think that it's important that, I mean, it, it did look like it was just it almost orchestrated, though, to some degree. If you looked at the, some of the, the statements from the administration officials after that. Um, and so I, I do think right now what we're seeing between the United States and North Korea is I still I still think that there's negotiations going on. And President Trump is still willing to, to throw the hammer down in the coming months if North Korea doesn't actually make good on its commitments that it made during the summit. I'll make a bet with you. He's going to say if someone says something terse or childish about him or, or criticize him on any level, tomorrow it's going to be a nightmare. And I'm just telling you, there's going to be a response the likes of which, you know, you have not seen uh, ever in tariff history. But that's my, my hunch. It'll be borne by some snippy comment. 
Well, I think it's uh, in the interest of these countries to probably take him seriously when it comes to no, trade. No, definitely. You're right. You're right. And um, you know, and another thing too, a lot of what we're seeing between the China and the North Korea issue, a lot of the things that the Chinese are going to tell and advise the North Koreans to do vis-a-vis -vis United States are things obviously that the Chinese want and the North Koreans want. They want the United States not to be deployed in South Korea. They want the, the war gaming exercises to stop, which they are on a pause. Right. Um, they want the missile defense systems out of that region. So there's a lot of overlap between what China and what North Korea want. And you got to kind of keep an eye on that. Um, it doesn't do us any favors to see these two leaders meeting in China. Yeah. Um, but I tell you, China, right now, the way it's playing this, not too well. It's one step away from being called an economic loser, and it could get worse. We'll have to see what happens, Rebecca. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, Neil.